Hey there, welcome back to The Wine Fool. I'm Scott. Uh, last week, we ventured out to Italy. This week, we're heading in the opposite direction, out to California and the city of Paso Robles to try some Cabernet Sauvignon. If you've ventured into California Cab, uh, but you've been sticking to Napa or maybe even Sonoma, uh, it's time to head a little bit further south. Located about halfway between San Francisco and LA, uh, Paso Robles is short for El Paso de Robles, uh, which means the Pass of the Oaks in Spanish. Pronunciation varies uh, between the Spanish Paso Robles and the anglicized Paso Robles, which no offense, but I think that just sounds kind of silly. With a rich history of wine going back to the late 1700s, uh, there are currently over 200 wineries in the Paso Robles AVA. So this week we're looking at a California classic, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, in order in the US, in order for uh, the wine to put the grape on the label, such as Cal Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, the wine needs to consist of 75% of that varietal. Today, uh, we're looking at a couple of single varietal uh, bottles uh, that are in the $20 range uh, and a blend that while it could technically be a single varietal bottle, uh, they've decided to list out the, the other varietals very prominently. That one's priced a little bit higher. So before we get into it, what should we be expecting from a Cabernet Sauvignon? If for whatever reason you've never tried one. Um, big, bold, dark fruits, red fruits, um, herbs on the nose, uh, and then some more subtle notes like chocolate, baking spices, coffee, vanilla, cocoa, um, and even tobacco. Uh, full body, high tannins, moderate acidity, um, low to no sugar. Uh, you know, I've found uh, recently in the last couple of years a, a California cab that something wasn't quite right. There was too much sugar in it. Um, and it just threw me totally off. It should not be called a Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, but, you know, and then moderate alcohol to round out the, the characteristics. So first up, we have the 2021 Castoro Cellars Estate Grown Cabernet Sauvignon. This is 13% alcohol by volume. And in this particular wine, the grapes uh, were grown organically. Um, this comes in at around $20. As I've been doing, uh, for a couple months now. Uh, I've been pouring these out ahead of time. So these have been out for about 20 minutes. Um, it's always good to give your reds some time to breathe, um, whether it's in a decanter or in the glass. Um, you know, there's also plenty of devices out there that will help you aerate your wine as you pour it. Um, maybe that'll be a future episode. So right off the bat, rich, bold color, very intense. Um, you know, uh, purple with a little bit of that burgundy at the edge. Big, bold, dark fruit, like, you know, I know this is a cab. It, there's there's no hiding it. <laughs> Herbs, I would even say mushrooms a little bit. It get like the, a little bit of earthiness on it. Let's give it a try. Cheers. That's great. Um, uh, good balance. Um, dry, uh, not crazy high tannins, uh, like strong, good acidity, um, a nice balance actually, really good, um, really nice for like a $20 bottle. Um, good, you know, structure. Not super full bodied, so it doesn't feel heavy. This is nice. This is a nice option. Um, some California cabs, and I want to say like some of the more popular ones, um, can feel a little heavy on the palate. Um, this is nice. It's It's got a nice balance. Um, it's not overweighing, so it's not going to overwhelm your palate. Um, good solid tannins, but not like, not that like I'm getting punched in the throat from it. Um, not a lot of oak, so, you know, not sure if this was aged in oak barrels. Um, but good, yeah, really nice. 
great price point too. Um, anytime, like, you know, obviously we, we do a lot of episodes on Trader Joe's. Um, so we're working in that like 10 to $20 range. I'm quite happy if I can get, you know, around that $20 range. So this is very nice. Next up, we have the 2020 Brady Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this is 15% alcohol by volume, so much uh, different ballpark from where we were. We were at 13%, now we're up to 15%, so we'll see if we notice that on the palate. Um, uh, and this, this was another bottle that came in right around $20. Uh, per the label, uh, the wine was matured in French oak barrels for 18 months, so whereas we're not quite sure on this, I don't think this uh, first one had oak aging, I could be wrong. This one is declaring it on the label. So 18 months um, producing luscious flavors, will be the judges of that, uh, of black, currant, and cassis, uh, accented by vanilla and spice. It's a lot of it's high expectations. Let's give it a try. Again, similar color, that deep purple, uh, very intense uh, color, uh, you know, only kind of seeing like a glimmer of that uh, burgundy at, at the edges. And let's give it a try. Let's give it a sniff. Rich, uh, rich aromas. A little bit more of that smokiness. Definitely that cassis. The oak um, brings almost like a bit of a smokiness to it. Um, so yeah, let's give it a shot. Cheers. Ooh, okay. So the, the oak adds like a whole extra layer. Um, and this one, this one's interesting. If you don't like oak, you won't like this. <laughs> um, that's a, the oak, uh, it's oaky. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely bringing that uh, at, a, at a high level. Um, it almost overwhelms a lot of other things going on in the wine which is unfortunate. It's so very different. Uh, I would say no oak, <laughs> uh, lots of oak, um, maybe a little too much. Generally good flavors, but that oakiness really like, uh, the first sip really like overpowers. So I guess just a word of caution, um, good flavor profile. Um, drying, uh, so good, like a good balance, uh, tannins are a little bit higher in this one. Um, the oak is what's really like kind of dominating this. So we talk about approachability um, and those notes or, you know, characteristics that can stand out in a wine that might put people off. That's, this is one of them. Uh, you know, some people love that. Some people love a good oaky Cabernet Sauvignon from California. Um, this feels a little too, a little too much, a little bit too strong. Um, you know, that's my opinion. It's still enjoyable. I wouldn't pour this away. I wouldn't get rid of it. There are going to be some people who like this a lot, and there's going to be some people who are like me who will drink it and maybe never come back to it. And then there's going to be some people who are just totally put off by this because of that oak. Um, so that it's one of those characteristics that is kind of polarizing, right? It, it kind of pushes people one way or the other. Or, you know, wine fool like me who will drink just about anything unless it's burning a hole in my face. I didn't give a rating for the last wine. I'm just realizing, um, you know, to me, California cabs are it's a bit of an introductory red, but it's still like a wine full level two. Nobody sort of, most people don't come into wine uh, at a California cab level. You kind of work your way up to it. Uh, this I would give one full level two. Um, would I get this again? Probably not. Um, just because of that uh, very heavy, heavy handed to me, it feels like heavy handed oak flavor. Last but not least, we have uh, the 2019 Possessor uh, from Tooth & Nail Winery. Um, so the label states that 79% of the wine is made from Cabernet Sauvignon, which means that technically they 
could just call it a cab and call it a day. Um, instead, the winemakers have chosen to list the other varietals they've added, which includes 14% uh, Petit Syrah, 4% Syrah, and 3% Malbec. Um, that Petit Syrah may add a little bit more uh, pepper uh, notes, uh, and as well as bringing the tannin levels up because uh, Petit Syrah typically is a more tannic uh, red wine. This is also 15% alcohol by volume. This thing sounds like I'm swirling a vat. Um, so right off the bat, we've kind of pulled away a little bit uh, from that typical Cabernet purpley red, uh, you know, look. This we're getting more into that uh, a little bit more of that burgundy color. So you can kind of see the influences of those other grapes, um, even though it's only 21%. Definitely different nose. Not quite as um, aromatic uh, as, as I found on the other wines. And, and it certainly has a lot of room to breathe. Cheers. That's different. I like that a lot. Um, no oak, uh, or if it is, it's not. It's hiding. Um, it's just a. Ni that's a nice combination. Um, you know, this is this kind of gets into the, you know, if you enjoy something, if. Then, then if you enjoy that thing and, and people add other things to it, you would hope that it would only make it better. Not always true, but this is one of those instances where I love a good Cabernet Sauvignon. A, new, a good California cab can't be beat. So in this case, they've taken that, you know, really great California cab and they've played around with it and they've added in a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and really like a really nicely well-rounded glass of wine not high in tannins uh it's actually it's quite mellow compared to some of the others um tannin level is quite nice great flavor um a little bit more the um red fruits like a little bit more raspberry kind of sense in there on top of the black fruit notes good tannins just a really well-balanced glass of wine. That wraps up this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our little adventure out to Paso Robles um, with its wonderful Cabernet Sauvignon uh, and Cabernet Sauvignon blends. Um, until next time, stay foolish and cheers to drinking better wine.